Hi guys, welcome to Empower and my name is Caroline Porter Thomas. Thank you so much as usual for watching my YouTube channel. So today I have something very special for you. I have an interview with a wonderful woman. Her name is Camille. And I met Camille when I was at a fundraiser for University of Miami, which is where my husband works. She was the main speaker and she shared her story and it touched me so much as a nurse and somebody in the healthcare fields that I said to myself, I absolutely have to ask her if she will come on and do a video for you guys because her story is so inspiring. You know, working in healthcare, we see people at their worst, you know, at their lowest, their darkest days. A lot of times, uh, you know, we never really get to see the people that heal. And there's a lot of people that do overcome the almost impossible or the impossible. You know, I understand it. They got better and they never want to step foot in the hospital again and I probably <laughs> I probably wouldn't either. I just I wanted to share her message with you guys, nurses, nursing students. Also, I know of course that there's a lot of other people that watch this channel. You could be a patient yourself, your mother could be, your father, brother, sister, anybody. So, this is a message of hope. There's always hope. And, um, hope is free. <laughs> hope is free. And so without any further ado, I'm going to let Camille take the stage that she truly deserves and you're going to love this video. Prior to being diagnosed with cancer, I pretty much was busy. I like to ride my bike, I like to go to the beach, I like to walk my dogs. I spent a lot of time outside gardening, just kind of living life, nothing out of the ordinary, just a really a normal person, just living my life. Working, being around my family, enjoying my home time, of course, and that's kind of it. The day that I went to the emergency room because I was having pain, um, they did a CT scan and they came back right away and told me there are spots on your pancreas, your liver, and your lungs, which was terrifying. I was very, very frightened. My mother died of pancreatic cancer when I was 24. She was 64. So my immediate thought was, I was in some really bad trouble. I was very scared. I think the first thing I did was call my oldest brother on the phone. I just told him things are not looking good. I'm sick and I didn't want to talk about it anymore because I didn't want to cry. So I said, I have to hang up now because I don't want to cry. And then I was admitted. I stayed there for seven days. I had a biopsy and I kind of was a little calm. Even my daughter kept thinking, you're really calm. <laughs> and I. I sort of stayed calm until the day that everyone came in my room at one time and I knew that that wasn't going to be good news because there was like the psychiatrist came in, a doctor, he wasn't the oncologist, he was just the regular MD and a whole bunch of nurses and I knew that wasn't going to be a good news. After I was told for certain that I had cancer that you know when they did the liver biopsy and they knew it was really cancer and he told me it is cancer um i was scared and i cried and i asked for valium i wanted to calm down it was the first thing i did i went to sleep and then i woke up and when i woke up i had this overall weird calmness again and kind of was taking everything in just day to day um thinking about what chemo would be like, not really wanting to do it, but um, I just sort of, uh, I was scared, panicked, but something way down, I just, I didn't want to think I was going to die, but everybody else around me seemed to think that, but I refused to think it, so. Chemo, there was a lot of tough days because I went through eight months of very, very aggressive treatment that made it impossible to eat, it made it impossible to sleep, it, it was just really horrendous. It caused a lot of side effects. Um, it caused me to have neuropathy where I can't feel my hands or feet. It caused a lot of side effects. Uh, eating was a chore, it was really a chore to eat. I think I got down to 90 pounds. I was very thin, weak. 
I think probably my worst day would have been I had a splenetic embolism, which they go in through your groin with some wires up into your spleen and they close down your spleen to save your blood supply in your body longer because I kept getting issues with low platelets, which would make me not be able to get treatment. So that was the worst day because you have to be awake and you have to, it took five hours and I was laying on a table flat for five hours and awake. So, and you see the, the TV screen and the wire going through your body and you're being told to hold your breath at times and things like that. So that was probably the worst day and I just wanted it to be over and go home and, 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 I went to recovery, they gave me some medicine there to like keep me calm and then I woke up and got out of there and went home. <laughs> so that was a pretty bad day. The first treatment I had was probably the worst and scariest because as you're sitting there, you're with these nurses and you are assigned a nurse, which was amazing. She was with me throughout that whole day and that was a very long day. That was probably a 12 hour day. I used to get chemotherapy for about 10 hours and then I would get a pump attached to my chest and I would go home with a pump that remained for 46 hours with chemotherapy. So that was a very challenging time. It was exhausting. It, uh, the first day was very scary because you look at those bags and you're like, oh my God, is that the chemo? Is that the chemo? And the first, you know, you think all of the, the chemo is going to go in your body and you're going to have this little, oh my God, chemo's in my body. And it's really, it's not like that. And you don't get sick and, and, and they give you so many pre-medicines these days that you really don't feel that, you feel tired. You feel a lot tired. You have some issues eating, but in, it did save my life and it works. So, um, I don't know, I can't say it was good, but I can't say it was bad because it was just something I had to go through and I'm happy not to be on it anymore. <laughs> A lot of my social support came right out the hospital. I was very fortunate to have amazing nurses. I would look forward to seeing them every two weeks. I got a lot of hugs. I mean, from the people at the desk who registered you for chemotherapy, um, I got to know everyone. They saw me kind of go through being sick and then I was lucky that every time I was coming, um, I was getting good scans. So I was more and more positive because I knew the chemotherapy was working. So in crazy as it sounds, I actually looked forward to getting there, getting it over with, being with my nurses because my nurses were a huge support system. They always encouraged me. I used social media for encouragement. I would, you know, kept in touch with family and friends everywhere. They would send me messages via social media. I'm thinking of you. I'm praying for you. That, that was a big thing. My dogs were huge. My dogs were with me all the time. I don't know how they knew I was sick, but they were actually quiet for months, which is unheard of in my house. And so they were always laying there with me. And I used the time of when I had my pump and was having the treatment as a kind of a rejuvenating part. I just thought that this chemo is going through my body. It's my job to rest and let it do its job. And that's kind of what I did. I let it do its job and thank God it did its job. <laughs> I started to eat. Uh, I, I was never really a bad eater because I come from an Italian background, so I had a Mediterranean diet already my whole life. I ate lots of salads, of course, pasta, fish, chicken, meat. I kind of ate almost everything. I don't eat pork because pigs are smart as dogs, so I will not eat pigs. I love pigs, they're so cute. I want a pig. Anyway, so I pretty much started eating more organic. I go to a local market where I know I get fresh produce or whatever's in season. I also go to a great fish and chicken where the chicken there is no hormones, the fish is all fresh. So I try to eat more healthy as far as like organic fruits and vegetables. I did do a little bit of juicing way back in the beginning, but it's not that great. <laughs> So I, I did do it, but ugh, uh, it wasn't too good. And it gave me a stomach ache, so I kind of quit doing that. So I try to, I'd rather eat my cooked vegetables than drink raw ones.
Another thing that I did religiously and I recommend to anyone is Epsom salt baths. I did that every single night before I went to bed. It helped take the toxins out of my body from the chemo. It also helped me go to the bathroom. When you're on chemotherapy, constipation becomes a norm in your life, which can make you very miserable. So the Epsom salt bath every night, I think it draw out the toxins. It helped me to go to the bathroom and it also helped me relax and go to sleep. I had a lot of steroids prior to chemotherapy that they give you for the side effects. The Epsom salt baths were very important because they drew those toxins out and they helped relax me because the steroids would kind of have me a little bit uh, high and excited and the, the Epsom salt warm bath at night, I would go right to bed after that and it would really, really help me. I recommend everybody does it. Visualization was a huge part in my healing and in my recovery. When I was very, very sick, I would visualize myself doing something I wanted to do. Like, I want to go to New York, but I'm so sick and I'm laying here on the couch. So I would actually visualize myself walking around New York and going in stores. And I would visualize myself going to visit family. I visualized myself in the future. I kept visualizing myself in the future. I wouldn't think, and in those future, I wasn't sick. I was healthy. I was riding my bike. I, I visualized myself sitting on the beach, getting tan, being in the sun. I just kept visualizing happy things. I didn't allow negativity or sad thoughts to come in. When they came in, I replaced them right away. And I visualized myself being healthy. And here I am, healthy and strong. So I believe visualization is very important. I hope that I live a grateful life now. I think I'm grateful, grateful actually to even be alive. Then I'm grateful to have hair. And then I'm grateful that I'm not on pain medicine. I'm grateful that I can help somebody else. I hope that I can. Life is, I don't get too caught up in little silly things anymore. I was always the person just like probably every other woman. If I could lose 10 pounds, I'm gonna be happier. If I got this job, I'll be happier. If I can get this or go here it, we're always kind of searching for that next thing that's going to make us happy and once you face your mortality being alive makes you really happy <laughs> so i would think that my life now i try to be a little bit more understanding because you never know what someone is really struggling with when we look at people we don't know that person they might look perfect and healthy to you but they might they might be sad they might struggle i think it's made me more aware of of uh people their feelings their emotions and i just hope that i think i was a happy person before but now I think I'm in this different happiness. And I think that for whatever reason, I'm still alive. And that gives me a big purpose to now help anyone who goes through any type of cancer because cancer and chemotherapy and treatments can be really hard and can beat you up. And you have to go really deep inside yourself to bring out the happiness and if it means and if that day if anything that makes you happy for me watching i love lucy reruns makes me happy so if i feel sad and i want to watch i love lucy in the middle of the day i do it i do whatever makes me happy if i want to eat cake i eat cake if i want to go out in my yard and do gardening i kind of just do whatever makes me happy because when i'm happy it makes me feel strong healthy and alive My situation was a little different. I was told there was no hope for me because my cancer had already spread to three organs by the time I even found out I had cancer. So I was told there was no hope for me. And I was told, um, go home and prepare to die. And that just wasn't acceptable to me or my family. I mean, I was very scared. I knew that I had a really bad cancer. I knew I had the cancer that had killed my mother. What I knew about pancreatic cancer was not good. So I was very scared, but I knew that there still had to be some hope, that I had to have hope. And hope is free, and faith is free. So 
with those two things, anything can be possible. I was lucky to get a second opinion, and I think that is very important. I think that when you, any type of cancer, that you should at least have two opinions, and then you decide where your best treatment is gonna be. And I was very lucky and fortunate to go to Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center, where I met an amazing doctor, and from the first day I walked into that room, they acted like it was normal, like they'd seen this before. And, and I was, of course, you know, it's me, it's, but the, you know, this is horrible, it's me. They were all like, this is okay. And they hurried around that room and asked me all the right questions. That's when I knew I was in the right place. They knew my pain, they knew the kind of pain I was in, they knew how to manage my pain, and they were asking me every question that was making sense to me. When they told me, they, they put it in front of me, what was wrong with me, Although it was daunting, scary, the doctor looked at my face and told me. He actually grabbed my, was I started to cry, because what are you gonna do when you find out you have stage four pancreatic cancer? You cry. I started to cry and he grabbed my face and he told me, this will work. And I held on to that because I thought, he's a lot smarter than me and I like what he said. <laughs> so I sort of held on to that and I was very fortunate because I had full response to chemotherapy. I haven't had any surgery other than to put a port in and take a port out. And my sp splenetic embolism, which is a big word, I had to look it up what it is, but I had that one day, but that was back in October of 2012 and I have not had chemotherapy since July of 2013. So. Nurses are angels on earth, I would say that. I first off and foremost, I don't even know how they do the job that they do because it's so stressful, it's really hard. I can't imagine, you know, that they have a bad day and they have to still come to work and cheer someone else on who's having a, maybe even a worse day. So I would say, first off, I like to thank every nurse out there because they are angels and they lifted me all the time. They always made me feel like coming to chemotherapy was normal. I actually, I know it might sound crazy, I looked forward to being there. I, I, I looked forward to being in their company. They were all around me, they were giving me hugs, we would exchange pictures. I saw some nurses become grandmas, I saw some girls get pregnant and have their own babies, some nurses, so, and I've kept lifelong relationships with with them and doctors and researchers every time I meet a cancer doctor um, I thank them I thank them for their their dedication and researchers are bigger than rock stars you know we tend to think rock stars are amazing or television stars or movie stars and I think doctors and researchers and nurses are the true rock stars of the world because they're curing cancer okay and they want to cure cancer the doctors and the researchers I've spent time with them I've talked to them I've had dinner with them I've thanked them and I go in there and I tell them I say look at my face and when you're in your lab with your little dishes think of me because you are making a difference and I want them to know they're making a difference because I'm here because of doctors, nurses, and researchers and amazing medicine that is available today. What I do to keep busy now, luckily I'm not in treatment anymore, so I have to fill up my time. So I do fill my time by volunteering. I am on the Family Patient Advocacy Board at Sylvester, on the council there to try to make it better for other patients. I pretty much use all my time now to bring awareness to pancreatic cancer and really to any cancer because any cancer is not good and I feel that we have in 2016 we need to really come further than we have in the past and that we need to end cancer I mean I, I hope that I live long enough to see it end in my lifetime one of the things and ways that I can get involved now is I did the Dolphin Cancer Challenge this past February. I rode my bike 13 miles in 40 minutes 
the team I was on was Team Denny, and they raised, I think the team raised over $50,000 for Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center that goes directly to research for at Sylvester. Next year, I have been asked to start my own team, which I'm very excited about. So I'm gonna be with Team Hurricanes, and I have a team named Team Hurricanes, Hurricane Camille, living proof, because Hurricane Camille happened in 1969 when I was 10, and my mother called me that from then on, Hurricane Camille, because she said, you never knew what you were gonna get with me. I could be crazy and drive you nuts, or I could be quiet. So she said, you just never knew I was like a hurricane running through the house. So I figured that would be tie into the Team Hurricanes. Looking forward to doing 14 miles and riding my bike into the stadium. It's a brand new Hard Rock Stadium. I've spoken at Dolphins Training Camp for breast cancer survivors to give hope and awareness and, you know, to show. And I hope that I can inspire people. I hope that I can show you that you can get a devastating cancer diagnosis like I did and have cancer in three of your organs and get and have hope and have faith that you're gonna be okay and get the right treatment with the right doctors, find the right treatment. Sylvester is an amazing hospital. I'm so fortunate that it's in our backyard and that I was treated there and I'm alive because had I gotten this diagnosis even maybe two years prior to when I did, I might not even be here today. A thousand people a day die of pancreatic cancer and that's just, that really hurts me. I fought really hard to be here and I'm very grateful to be here. So I feel like anyone I can help, I'm looking forward to helping anyone with cancer because I've been there, I know what treatment is like, um, but now I'm on the other side, okay? And I I've, I've, I've was diagnosed, I went through the hard, grueling time, and now I'm enjoying life again. So it, it, I'm just showing you that it's possible, it's very possible. And the further we get in medical research, I believe honestly that these types of cancers like I was diagnosed with that have metastasized to other organs, that I'm hoping that we're gonna be able to treat those like a chronic illness down the line, that you might be treated as though you have a chronic illness illness and not a terminal cancer. It doesn't mean, cancer doesn't mean you're going to die. And it certainly is scary and not fun, but it also has awakened me and brought me a whole new meaning of life. I'm learning how a hospital needs community support. I'm learning how hospitals are run. I'm learning about how research is done and what it takes to get research done for new drugs to treat cancer. Pretty much, I'm a happy girl right now. <laughs>《2017 will be the next Dolphin Cancer Challenge and I hope to meet a lot of you there. I hope that you will think about joining my team, Team Hurricanes, Hurricane Camille, Living Proof. I would love to meet you. I would love you to join my team. Caroline is going to be there and it's going to be a great day. It's all about cancer survivors and fighters and you know you want to be a cancer fighter and you know you want to tackle cancer with me. I hope that I meet you and I hope that this next year's DCC will be bigger and greater than ever. You can find all the details below for the next Dolphin Cancer Challenge which will take place in February 2017. See all the information below and really think about joining my team and be a cancer fighter with me. I can't wait to meet you. <laughs> Alright guys, thank you so much as usual for watching this video and if you did like it and you would like to see more videos like this then please give the video a thumbs up. <laughs> and also if you have a, a story of you know overcoming the impossible and you would like to share it with other people and you would like me to interview you in the same way or similar way go ahead and post a comment or you can email me my email address will be below and again I know she already mentioned it I would love to meet you this February at the bike ride so I will be there on Camille's team Yay. and we would love to meet you and ride with you and we are going to raise as much money as possible to you save know end, lives. We are save lives, lives and end this devastating disease um, of cancer so let's let's do it all together all right guys I will see you there I love you, love you. <laughs> bye. bye thank you <laughs>